Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Now, in the last episode, I had started my new build of a crystal oscillator factory, which is targeting 60 crystal oscillators per minute. And I've made pretty good progress so far. We actually placed and hooked up 101 machines in the last episode alone. Thank you, Blueprints. I don't think I could have done it that fast without them. Now today, we have our to-do list on the side still. I've just added a couple extra things towards the end there. Tried to look up somewhere we can actually see it. There we go. And basically, we're going to go through that in a linear fashion. So next up, we're going to be hooking up the water extractors, building a train station, making a logistics sorting room, adding our manufacturers, which are the things actually making the crystal oscillators, and then we got to do the power and cosmetics. We'll also need to actually send in the various required ore to the factory, most of which is located quite close nearby, so it should be relatively straightforward to do that. All right, so a lot to do, and with no time to spare... Let's begin. So, I haven't really done anything in between episodes. I've just numbered the different machines that I have. I always like putting the numbers on them. And this time, I'm numbering them based on the total in the factory, rather than numbering them per room. So, previously in, like, the aluminum factory I built, if there was 10 assemblers in one room and 10 in another room, I'd name both of them 0 to 10. But this time now, I'm naming them for the whole factory or numbering them that way. I've also placed down some floodlights, just for when it inevitably gets dark. It'll kind of brighten up the area for us to keep working. All right, so we're going to head downstairs to the basement where we're going to be doing our water extraction. Of course, we've all these refineries up above us, and they all have their floor hole, piping floor hole things in position. And we now need to just line up all the pipes and feed them the correct amount of water for each row. So, should be easy. Let's begin. So, we'll start off with some foundations that just lead all the way out this way. I'm going to then get, let's see, walkway. Make it a T-crossing, if I can. Rotate there, and just go all the way out as well. There we go. I think we need to go just a little bit further. Now, this first set of refineries, I think, just requires 120 water, which is just one extractor, so it should be pretty easy. Now, in order to line these up nicely and make it look somewhat decent, I'm going to grab the pipe junction crosses and basically look at where we're at relative to the foundation and then bring this down and just line it up a bit further back. We just need to do this for all eight of these machines. Is that correct? Yep. And it doesn't matter. If we're a little bit off, I can just correct it. But just to get the, the ball rolling, try to get this done kind of quick. And then we can hook up a straight line pipe and just make adjustments where we need to. It'll kind of make sense once we get one of these down. But I use the pipe junction crosses because they auto snap um, to each other. Which makes life a little bit easier when you're building pipes. All right, right about there. Now, I've just noticed something. They're actually um, colored black on top. I'm just going to color those white really quickly. And then we'll drag our big long pipe out and then just join these up. Okay, so that's that. These are, it doesn't matter if they're aligned or not. They're just, you'll see. All right, so let's go with the pipeline support. Let's just start it here. Grab our pipe, turn it to a Mark 1, no indicator. And just drag it all the way out to the very end. Or as far as we can go. Keep dragging it. And we'll chop away the bits we don't need. Alright, looking good. So, now that I think I'm aligned, I'm going to grab one of these junctions. And we'll just aim it at the pipe. Hold control and then rotate it so it's aiming vertically. I remember doing that in a... I think a long time ago in one of my episodes where I built an oil rig. Or like a coal oil rig. And uh, a lot of people said that they didn't know they could actually rotate these vertically. It does make life a lot easier. I think in that one, we actually rotated them diagonally. And that's why I built the ones to my right, just so we could snap to them. Okay, so I think we're lined up, so we'll just get rid of these ones. The white pipes actually look pretty cool. Alright, so that's chopped away. And let's see if we can just hook these up now, see if I got my aiming correct. Looking good so far. And that's it. So they are all hooked up, looking damn clean. Alright, so we can just chop off the ends that we don't need, and also get rid of the supports. So I'll just do this, just to make sure that there's no gap between the pipe. And I think that's basically it. So just get rid of you as well. Cool. Alright, so now we can color the pipes blue, the water color that I have. 
in my swatches. And I leave the junctions white, which is why the floor holes are white at the top. Excellent, right? There we go. How quick was that? Nice. I dare you to do it faster. <laughs> I'm sure with blueprints, actually, I probably could have. Could blueprint everything. Um, okay. So looking good. So what we need now are the actual water extractors. So we only need one for this particular row. So we'll put a little junction thing there. We'll get a water extractor of which we need seven in total, I think, for this build. Hold control to line it up with its little buddy in front of it there. And we'll just bring this right up to the edge of the rail. Pretty close anyway. So it clips through the railing, but I'm happy with that. That's fine. If you really didn't want it to, you could actually just take away the rail anyway. Um, and then we'll just go pipeline mark one, no indicator. In you go, rotate to auto 2D. And yeah, that's fine by me. Then we'll just drag this out to somewhere like here. Do we need to go further than that? No, we'll just go to there. That's fine. And you can do the same. And then you guys can just be friends. <laughs> I am turning into Bob Ross. All right, uh, so what they'll need is a pump, which is why I've done this weird curve. So that's enough room for a pump. And it just needs to be aiming this way. So that'll feed all of these up, which is a nice thing. You don't need to be putting a pipe, a pump on each one of these. That'd be silly. You just need one here, and that'll add the head lift to bring it up to the top thing. Uh, and I measured it. It should work. <laughs> so if it doesn't, I guess we could put on a bigger pump, but it should work. All right, we'll just stick it somewhere in the middle, maybe right about there. And maybe tilt it over one, over two. Is that okay? That seems okay. That keeps our uh, power supply pretty much angled straight up. But it doesn't keep the light up. I guess I want the light to be dead up. So yeah, let's just do it by default. Okay, cool. Uh, yep, we can probably just connect that then somewhere to the roof and connect these to the roof. Um, so that's that basically done, right? Super easy. That's one set effectively done. I guess I've done the color slightly wrong there, so let's just do this and this, and then turn this one back to white. Yeah, something like that. All right, so this row only needs the one extractor, so that should be totally fine. But while we're here, we should also sort out the floor holes. So this is going to be taking in copper. The other one doesn't have that, or the next one over. So that'll be a bit quicker to do. Um, so in order to do this, we'll just grab a wall somewhere here, just to get us up a bit higher. And we're going to have some sort of walkway. That can take us up there. I see people do this in their factories a lot, by the way. They kind of um, put the street lights into the walls. So you just have like the little lamppost sticking out, which is a really nice way to hide your lights. Might try to do something like that in future. But for this build, I don't think of, I might have the space actually to try it, but we'll, we'll see. Cosmetics will be the final thing I do. Okay, so we want to get up there. So let's just rotate on my hotbar, get the catwalk crossing. And we're starting up about here. There we go. That gives a decent amount of space. And how are we for the machine on the left? Yeah, looking good. Not too bad. All right, we'll just extend this out pretty much all the way. Oh my God, I hate the hover pack. It's so annoying. <laughs> I wish it just had the capability of the jet pack as well. It'd be so much nicer if you could just alternate between the two. Anyway. Or you just put batteries in it and it just worked instead of having to be near power all the time. That'd be nice. I'm sure there's mods for it as well. I'm really tempted to do a modded playthrough once we're done with this vanilla playthrough, but I'm scared because when 1.0 comes out, typically in games, a lot of mods break. All right, so what we'll need now is our splitters, but to kind of gauge the distance first, we'll just do a temporary, like pull this down once and see where we're at. So splitters will need to go pretty much right there. Aiming away from us. And that's that. Alright. Let's just line these up. They should let me know like that when they're coming near the floor hole. Alright, we are all hooked up then. So... How much copper ore needs to come in here? Just 120. It's a pretty low amount. So a Mark II belt is 120, isn't it? It is. We could just have it exactly where it needs to be, I guess. All 
Okay. And uh, how does the little railing look? Yeah, it looks fine, right? Because you can't really see. Yep, the tubing kind of goes over it, so it looks pretty good. And then just to remember that this needs to be hooked up at some point in the future. Floor is too steep. What? You're not allowed to put it on the railing? That's weird. I can put it there. Anyway, that's just a way to remember, like, oh yeah, you know, we have to feed in copper from here somewhere someday. I don't know how we're going to do that. Uh, worst case scenario, we rotate it around and we feed it from the other side, but I think it'll be fine. I got I haven't worked that out yet, but there's got to be some sort of depot in here on the bottom floor that probably takes in trucks, because the Caterium is kind of far away. So we are at the north of the map, right here. And the Caterium is coming from all the way either over here or here. So it's pretty far, you know. It, it, we could just bring a truck along there and like feed it in somehow. Could look quite nice. Or even a mini train, just a train that just has one purpose like that. Maybe. Haven't yet thought about how we're going to do that. All right, don't know why I flew up here. But anyway, so that's the floor hall hooked up. So we can get rid of this concrete now. We can add this back in. All the way up to the wall and get rid of that. This just needs to be regular flooring. This can be more of this. And then we'll just make some stairs. So I'll just switch to default mode. I just want to have a little ramp kind of going up there we go because um i don't know it can look a bit weird having like a giant um staircase so even if it's only three long i think it just looks better when you've got it like a staggered all right cool so yeah maybe we could have people actually someone actually mentioned in the comments of the previous episode something about like oh why don't you use um you know uh ceiling belts that i think they said i'm kibitz does it and it can look quite good so my response to that was basically that we've tried it in one of my other factories. It's in the oil processing plant in a couple places. Uh, the problem is if you've got, let's say that this is the ceiling belt, you can't see what's on the belt. So I like to have everything accessible by walking. Let's say you don't have a jetpack, there's no power, and you want to get around your factory without deleting things or, yeah, using your jetpack or whatever. I just think it's kind of nice and it makes a factory look a bit more practical. A anyone can obviously do whatever you want, you know. But I just think it's kind of cool to be able to walk around it as if it's a real factory. Um, so I also like to be able to see what's on a belt. So I typically don't hang them from the ceiling because you can't typically see what's going on on top of them. That's why I use logistical floors. That's what the person commented. They said, why do you use logistical floors? You know, these smaller interstitial floors below your walkways. And it's because I usually make them glass so I can look down and see the belts. That's the main reason. There's no right or wrong answer, that's just the reasoning behind it. <laughs> Alright, so um, that's that road done, pretty easy, and we could probably put some steel pillars and things underneath it just to make it look a little better. But that's uh, effectively it. Um, so it's again the same sort of setup here, I'll try to be a bit quicker. And because this doesn't need floor holes, or um, yeah, conveyor holes, we don't need staircase to go up to this row. It's just pipes, so we don't need to be able to interact with it or anything. Uh, so let's just... Move out to the extension of this area here, all the way down to the end. Okay, and let's switch over to... Just for ease, I'm just going to bring this down this way as well. We'll get rid of it in a second. I suppose to make use of the space, you could just put these here, but facing the opposite direction. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to keep it row by row looking the same. So I think that's better. All right, um, let's go one, two, three. Yeah, so we'll start here, start at the end. If we just brighten that up, we can kind of see where it's at. So it's in the middle of the foundation and this one's touching the line. So we don't need to be in the middle, but it's touching the line just like that, that's fine. All right, next one over, it's touching the dots. So it'd be about there. Touching the dots again, so it's about there. Quite a few of these. I'll start to recognize the pattern though then. They can go a bit quicker. Oh, how can I not go quicker when Arya Math starts playing? It's pure efficiency. 
we're gonna look back and it's like total totally wrong. Um So there's 14 machines here in total. These are basically taking in 300 copper ingot, 300 water, and then putting out 300 copper sheets. These copper sheets then go to the assemblers. That one's off. Yeah, the copper sheets go to the assemblers. They get made uh, into AI limiters. And that's all hooked up and everything already. So it's just the water that's really left for a lot of these machines. All right, nice. That went actually pretty smoothly. So um, let's just cut this away. And uh, we can cut all this away as well. And you could probably join these uh, walkways actually as well to make them interconnected. All right, good. So chop this end bit away. Let's get rid of any of the other pipeline supports we saw and just fix up the pipes then. All right, super clean, looking good. Uh, I'm just gonna join these then together because it just seems to make sense. So let's do that. trying to think what is it it's a t-junction that'll need to come out basically and there'll be a wall here of some sort so that's fine I guess there will probably be a wall the whole way yep all right cool we happy with that think so. So yeah, there'll be a wall of some sort here. Uh, let's just grab this. Let's just paint these little bits and I'll just fly up and down real quick painting this. So start here. Paint. And uh, we don't have to join upstairs with any floor holes. So this is just this whole layer is pretty much done. We'll just hook up the water extractors next. Grab a water extractor. We're going to need three of these. Uh, bring it pretty close, clipping through the fence, but not the kind of air buoys just there so that's one just hop over get some space two and three these can pretty much line up as well oh weird how did i not line that up Oh, that's strange. <laughs> it actually did line correctly, but uh, to the wrong thing. Alright, cool. Looking good. So again, same thing on the other side. We'll just drag this out to about here. Drag this out to about here. Connect them. Make them friends. And then give them a pump. Put the pump aligned with its other pump. Aim it straight up and paint the pipes. All right, so that's three extractors. So the one on the end will need to be 50%. So we'll just stick it to 60 per minute. So that's 120, 120, and 60, which is three hundo. I'll just join these up as well. good thing with these vertical pipes is they should all actually fill at the same time. The whole bottom pipe will fill first and then they'll just kind of like start flowing up, I think. Alright, cool. Happy with that. So that's two layers done. So that's the first eight refineries, then it's the next 14 refineries. So next up is the final 20. So unfortunately these are going to be two rows. which is going to make things a little painful to do this again. And also, excuse me, these are aligned with the center of two foundations, not the center of one foundation. Which means we got to change things just a bit. So just dra drag that out that way, drag that out that way. We'll do the same over here. You know what, actually, seeing as I've just done this for two others, I'll probably just time lapse this and make it go kind of a bit quicker because you've seen it now. So that makes sense.
Alrighty, there we have it. So, that was quite the long time lapse, actually. I ended up having to run back to base to get some extra materials. I was lacking iron plates for all of the walkways that I ended up building. But, long story short, we have now our 20 Caterium ingot refineries all hooked up. So, just to give a quick reminder of these machines, there's 20 of them here in two rows of 10, and they're doing Caterium ingots. So, that means they take in Caterium ore, they mix it with water, and they output ingots. They take in 24, and then they half it to 12. So in total, for the whole block, we've got 480 water and 480 caterium ore. And then we get half of that out. We get 240 caterium ingots. Now, that's already been sorted out, right? The ingots come down here and get fed into all of these constructors. They get made into quick wire, so that's all done and dusted. Um, and that's pretty much it. So basically what I've gone for here is a walkway down the middle to then kind of connect up the different areas. So if we just go up the walkway, we can then kind of see all of our splitters. They've got a Mark III belt carrying 240 resources each. This will be the input side. So similar to over there, how we decided that the input for copper ore has to come in along the ceiling somewhere or somewhere in this way. They'll have to hit there and hit over there. And then they'll get fed manifold style along the whole thing. Um, I wasn't too worried about taking up some of the space in here. It seemed to make more sense doing a walkway in the middle rather than doing it along the side, similar to how we have in the other place, just because a lot of free space here, and I don't think I'll need any more water for this entire factory. There's plenty of water out there, and there's an entire ocean through the crevice out that way. So, obviously, if we really get desperate and really need it, I've got loads, so it's going to be fine. Um, so, yeah, I haven't painted this or anything like that. I'm just going to leave it, and I'd say that is pretty much done now. So, let's tick that off. So, let's go public... So that is going to be the water extractors are all fed up and the ore logistics is now in position to feed in stuff later. So next up is going to be the train station. Oh, I made a mistake. Oh, I know why. Um, let's just say cosmetics. Yeah, I hit the character limit. They can only get so long. Okay. All right, I'm pretty happy with how it's already looking, even without my like dressing it up with aesthetics and, and stuff and windows and... We could put some other things in signs and things like that to make this place look nice. Oh, I did actually forget two things. Um, pumps. We have two pumps to place down still. So they're going to be coming out this way, coming towards me. And put it halfway on along that pipe somewhere there. That should be fine. And we'll just do another one on the other side. That should give it the head lift it needs to get all the way up, I hope. Yeah. All right, cool. So let's head upstairs. And these, remember these lights and things, they're just temporary for me to see during the night. We're now heading back up to the train station, another floor up. And this is where our station is going to be. So I've kind of colored the floor just to kind of gauge the distances I'm going to need. So this is the railway line coming in. So it's an interesting problem, actually, because I don't think I really thought ahead that well. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Because... If a train is going to go straight through a factory, you need some sort of bypass. Obviously, if things are stopping loading and unloading, it will back the whole railway up. So we need a way to go around it, or just let this go straight through, and this breaks off on one side and on another side, um, which is probably what I'm going to do. So I feel like this is just going to go straight through, and then we'll build a station on that side and a station on that side to handle the incoming and outgoing, and that'll be the continuation of it over there. So I'm just going to fly over to this, and drag this back out so I know where the other side is coming out. Haven't yet decided how far out we're going to go, though, with a lot of things. So let's just leave it to there. I think it's probably a good amount. All right. So that's the target. That's definitely where the railway has to go back out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, maybe I'll just um, make a cut or something in a minute because I'll probably have to play around for a minute seeing where exactly this can all fit. Alright, so I think I've kind of got them where I need them, the stations. Uh, so, we've got one station there on the left and let's say the railway is about here. It's kind of in the center of these two. It's a little to the left of it because it's not on the world grid. That's fine, don't worry about it. But... Um, Basically, if we were to call this the center, we could say one, two, three, four foundations over could be the station, and it's the same from here. So one, two, three, four. 
So that would be even spacing between the two, which is nice, but the problem is, excuse me, downstairs, we have a factory under here. And I'd like to leave a kind of a walkway in here. And remember, my walkways are about three, so it'd be one, two, three. So the room should start here, which is fine, because we could just have a little ceiling thing that just carries whatever in or out, really, out that way. Um, and I guess I'd be okay with that. Let's just block it out and see, and that gives me a better feeling. So something I'm going to do, I'm going to make this a proper cross junction. So this is actually going to come out further than I initially anticipated. So we'll start out here. Bring it all the way over. Just let that go real far out that way. So that's three across. So this room will start here. That's the glass walkway. So this will be the pathway. Okay. So if that was to be the depot room, the room that's dealing with sorting and storage and anything that's coming down from downstairs. This would have to, the floor hole would really couldn't be any less than over here. So let's just see if I go back upstairs and have a look at where that station would be then. I can kind of see like would this work. So we know that that's where it would have to be. So this it can't work like that because the, the railway is going to stay straight. Yeah. So it's got to stay where it was, and we'll just feed stuff over. Um, it's worth mentioning, if you were following in the last episode, sorry to bury this so deep into this one, but um, I extended that out one more layer and moved all the machines down. Well, not all of them. I, I added an extra one on the end and cut away the one there. So if you're realizing that things aren't lined up the exact same way, that's why. So I basically would have removed this and removed that and then added two on the end from the previous episode. Um, I can't remember exactly why I did it. It's just it felt like there wasn't enough space or something at the end. So for the walkway to be correct. So now it's it should just be all lined up a bit better. So if you're having trouble lining it up or following along the exact same way, uh, that's why. I was thinking of actually in the future doing a beginner, super beginner friendly series where I literally like show people exactly how to build. Because I get a lot of comments saying like, oh, I can't figure out how you did this. I never really thought people would build the exact same way. I really, really advise people not to do that, to play the game and figure out their own way of building. I like to think that my playthrough just helps maybe give ideas or you can maybe build the same amount of machines. It's like, yeah, I'm doing 20 Caterium ingots, you know, and you can figure that out with me. But to literally try to specifically on the grid follow like the exact same, I don't know if that's really playing the game at that point. You're kind of just like, I don't know. It's like copying someone's homework. Are you learning? Are you enjoying it even? <laughs> like, I don't know. But hey, each to their own. But I just feel like, especially this far in now, you shouldn't really have to copy someone's factory. You sh you'd get more enjoyment out of maybe following the recipes they use. But yeah, building it yourself is definitely like the fun. I don't know. I'd be interested to see what other people think of that. I don't want to sound too arrogant or something. Um, okay, so anyway, so this station here, we'll just chop that one away. And we'll add on the platforms. So, does that need to come out further? I'll be clipping. I think we need at least six on each side. So how many is that? One, two, three, four, five. It's gonna get rid of these lights. It's actually gonna get dark and they're not gonna work now, but oh well. So this can come out further. Because the walkways have gone out further, we'll chop away some of this railway. But yeah, I was I had ideas like I was like, oh man, if I really tried, I could probably even like throw blueprint graphics on screen. Not like the blueprints in game, but like literally show you this is a five by five room with a blah blah blah, and this is how many machines. This is where the inputs go. And I could literally like do that. And I might do that for in future, like some sort of very, very beginner friendly series if one when one point comes out. Um Especially, I was even thinking, like, if you get all the way to the end of the game. See, I've never looked ahead. I don't really know what I'm running into. People ask me, why 60 per minute for crystal oscillators? I don't know. 60 just seems like a good number. <laughs> I don't know. I actually initially said I was going to do 15. And then some people said something about it not being very much. So I was like, okay, we'll just quadruple it. Um, so that that's basically how I came to that conclusion. And I also, I was going to go a bit higher. But I noticed if the numbers went higher in my Excel sheet... 
I wouldn't have enough quartz to do it without tapping another quartz node, which is over there. So it just seemed like, okay, I'll make pretty much full use of these and have an even number. So there's 1,200 quartz there. And uh, I have 32 manufacturers doing 60 oscillators. So I think I've, I'm just going to tab out for a second. If I go to 34 manufacturers, you just get very uneven and broken numbers. So the next time you get an even number, I think it's at 40. But it would be 1,250 raw quartz. So it's just 50 more than I would have, which is a shame. Because I could have done 75 oscillators per minute. Because everything else is totally fine. I could easily do that for Caterium. Easily have the copper, the rubber. Everything else is fine. It was just the quartz would mean I'd have to tap another node. Plus, I don't know if I need 75. <laughs> so it's fine. Anyway, that's just maybe a little behind the scenes of why I choose numbers or where I'm going with it. But because I don't look ahead, I don't really know. So what I'd like to do when I finish the game or get to tier eight and I see everything, I could literally just work backwards. And I'm surprised no one's done. I'm sure someone must have done this, but work backwards, backwards from the end game recipe and see exactly like what is the minimum amount you need to finish the game in sort of a reasonable time frame, right? Where you're at least having the final space parts done within an hour. I, I don't know at the time, but like something where it's like a reasonable time. Because obviously you could just underclock things and like leave it for thousands of hours, <laughs> but that's like unreasonable. So something where it's like a reasonable amount where machines are running at 100%, you know? It'd be kind of interesting to know what the number is. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And that way you can make a beginner series where literally you just go through the game and you build everything that's required to finish the game rather than anything extra. All right, so anyways, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, that's six. And this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. Excellent. So this one can be chopped away and we'll add a station onto that end because it's going to be facing out. And then, yep, so one, two, three, four, five. So this needs to be a station. Let's get rid of that light. And that way they are lined up with each other. Same distance from the exit. And they will just need their floor host. So this is going to be the station. What's it called? Amsterdam. Like one of, probably my favorite city in the world, Amsterdam. I haven't been to that many, but it's definitely one of my favorites. So we'll call this... Uh, C-O exports. Crystal oscillator exports. Maybe we could name this factory in future. And then the other one's just going to be C-O imports. Crystal oscillator imports. So this will be where the rubber comes in. Mexico City. C-O imports. Oh, my girlfriend has let my cat in. <laughs> the door just like opens and a cat just walks in. She must have been scratching at the door. All right, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of some of these things now that we don't need. All right, so that's what we're dealing with. What is that? The mountain. All right, so I'm doing the railway, and because this isn't on the world grid, it's quite a challenge to get the curves in place without bending the rail and also get it to line up as it goes through the factory. So this center line is going straight through the factory. This is the bypass. And then if you want to go into the factory, you cut to turn left. Uh, if you want to come out of the factory, that will join on, if that makes sense. So you don't need to crisscross, I don't think, because there's no reason that this line would ever have to go over there. That's the in and that's the out. So we just have to go forward and then have one cut that leads over that way. So it should be pretty straightforward. Um, so what I've done is I've extended the foundations of the off-grid railway here straight through the factory to allow me to get one line that's dead straight. But I thought I should at least show how I've done that. So I know that this line here, for instance, is where I need to continue on from. But if I do, even if I'm dead straight, it's going to just keep curving it. I've just tested it and trust me, it does. So what I need to do is cut that first, get a line here, start in the middle where I know I always continue my rails, jump across... Um, actually, I'll just have to cancel that for a second. I need this to be here. All right, let's try that again. So it has to be here. In the center. You look dead at the center where you want it to be. Bring it all the way over. And this needs to be behind that one. So right about there. It has to be a half foundation behind if I want to get my signals looking good. Now that that's a straight line, now I can connect this one. Just like that. So a nice... Nice bend. That actually just happened to work out. I didn't even plan that. Um, 
and then this is dead straight and it should remain straight the whole way through at least that's the plan so we'll just fly all the way up we can look for our next cut in the rail which is there so I know that I have to come a little bit further than that right to here looking dead in the center keep jumping out and do the same over this way this should be as far as it can actually even reach thinking about it yeah cool so now we've got a railway that's super straight going straight through the factory and what I can do is go underneath and cut away this foundation now and put in my own one which is on the world grid and that way uh, things will just line up and look a little bit nicer so I'll probably build like a little tunnel around this railway or something maybe a little glass windows looking in so we can see the trains go by as they cut through the center of the factory That could look pretty cool. Looks like it's uh, the sun is rising again soon. It's actually hard to tell because this area just kind of has a pink hue to it sometimes. But I think it is coming up. Alright, there we go. Looking cool. Looks kind of scary actually. Um, let's just get that. Go straight through. Let's get that one. Go straight through. Alright, cool. There we go. So there's our straight railway going through our factory. So obviously because it's not on the world grid, it's not perfectly aligned uh, with the factory itself. It's shifted over. So this is the edge here. And that spills over the line just ever so slightly. So what I'll have to do is probably give it a bit of breathing room. Have a, a wall here or even here. It doesn't matter. And that way we can look in on it but without getting on top of it. So yeah, something like that. All right, cool. Let's just get rid of these colors as well real quick. They were just references. Uh, so the next thing then, I might build a lookout tower. And see if we can join this up easily. Guessing it's not going to be easy, but we'll try. So it needs to join into here. I mean... Yeah, <laughs> it basically is what I want, right? I mean, do I need to change that at all? I don't think so. Obviously, we're going to put a foundation under it, but I'm just looking. It looks nice and the curve is quite good. Looks fairly natural. Yeah, I like that a lot. Okay, so let's try the same on this side. See if it goes as nicely as that did. I mean, yeah, pretty good. Let's get a bit higher up. Actually looks pretty cool. And the spacing should be pretty even. I mean, it's not dead even, but it's pretty even. It's quite nice. Whoa. Saved it. Yeah, it's quite nice. Gotta say I'm really happy with that. That just worked out really well, so I'll just leave it as is. And then when we do cosmetics, I'll find a way to make that kind of look like, you know, more of the steel frame foundation under it. A bit more bridge-like. Um, but that's basically us hooked up. So now we need to go to the other side and do the same. I can't believe it's just lining up so nicely, or at least the way it's doing it. The amount of times I've tried to do this before, where it does not want to play nice like that at all. I think it's because I've just given it a lot of space to work with. That's probably why. Uh, okay, so let's just get rid of this. And that, and that, and that. Alright, so the next thing on our... That's the train station done, really. Uh, the next thing is, though, sorting out the sorting room, no pun intended, uh, downstairs. It's not even a pun, I just said the same word. So I'm just going to get rid of these lights. You don't probably need them anymore. You probably wouldn't have seen them being used anyway. And then I can kind of work out where things are going to go. Alright, so there we go. The railway stations are in place, in position. Um, now making the station look a little nicer is going to take a bit more time, but we can add raised concrete here as like the platform. And that gives us space between the unloading and loading, and it should do the same over here. And it also gives us space between the tunnel that's going through our factory, where trains are kind of going to be flowing through, and we can put a window on it or something. Um, maybe we'll need a bridge that goes over then. So it's going to be something like this. Yeah, all the way out. And that'll be like coated concrete, I guess. So materials, coated concrete. Something like that. And then inside, it's going to be asphalt. 
so we can see the floor holes a bit better. And obviously it's raining now, so it looks a bit weird, but that's going to be the general idea. So much like my other factories, you know. Uh, yeah, and then this will be just reserved space now for the trains that want to go through. That is the bypass, the central bypass for the Crystal Oscillator Factory. Uh, okay, so that's basically the station done. And, you know, like I said, we'll do aesthetics later, but that's the logistics of the station pretty much done. So now we have to hook it up to the sorting room, which is going to go down below. So if this is the exports line, this is everything leaving the station, which means that we need to hook up floor holes at the inputs, not the outputs. So let's just do that real quickly. And wh why would we mean, need many uh, this many? I have no idea. But, you know, you never know what you're going to end up sending away here. There is actually a bunch of coal deposits. So maybe in future we could just use it to load up coal and send it somewhere as well. Hello, friends. A little bit of time has actually passed for me because behind the scenes, I actually ended the episode, I said my goodbyes, and then in editing I realized with a lot of the crap that I chopped out when I was doing the uh, water extraction stuff, I ended up making the episode quite short, so I've got a little bit more time to go. Now I've also, in between recording sessions, as you can see, the train that was just waiting to come into here, I've just added it to basically go where it has to go pick up rubber and then send it in here. Now it's not going anywhere, as you can see the stations are all just, you know, waiting to get their conveyor belts and their lifts and things, but there is 9,600 rubber stored in both of these, so the network is working, and I just created a very crude and rudimentary little loop down there at the very end, so it's just looping around to itself, and that allows the train to kind of flow freely now. All right, so uh, knowing that I had a little bit more time to record, I decided to start work on the sorting room, which is down below. So I'd done a little bit on camera and then said, ah, you know what, this is too much for the rest of the episode, I'll leave it. Turns out it wasn't. So what I was doing was basically just marking with paint where this room is and where this area is to create a little mini logistical floor right below the station. The reason for that is basically with the station being so far over to the right, it kind of encroaches down on the hallway here and a little bit on this factory maybe, or this room, I guess you could say. So I wanted to have a separated floor, which I'll probably hide it and tuck away later uh, in some ways, you know, maybe add some roof tiles or something to get rid of it. But basically, it's just so I can pull down the actual goods here and ferry them over, and then I know where the room sort of begins. Now, the more important thing is I've decided that this place is going to get several truck stations down here. So this is going to be a road. So over there is a sort of a slanted hill that leads up towards the Caterium and towards other deposits. So I'm going to make that a road and pave it down and it'll join into here. So a three width road that flows under the factory and then turns right and goes in this way. And I've blueprinted um, basically the truck stations. So let's take a look. So this is one of them. Now it has its floor baked into it. So we need to just line it up like this and rotate it around. And I think that's it. And it just gets built for us. How nice is that? <laughs> it's pretty cool. So it's very much similar to the one I did in the episode called Transport Hub quite a while ago, but slightly refined, slightly improved, I like to think. And there's a gap here on the right because we'll kind of join them on together. So effectively, we'll just get rid of this little area now. It's a 4x4, so it's relatively easy to kind of slot into place. I don't know how many of these we'll really need, but I'll just fit as many in here as I can. Okay, so I know that we'll need to be bringing in Caterium. We need to bring in Copper. Quartz will come into the factory in a different place. It doesn't need to be brought in via a truck, so definitely Caterium and Copper can come in via a truck. Not sure about anything else. I suppose Fuel has to come in, and that could probably come in through a train actually and then ferry down to here and maybe this could be a little truck depot for other trucks to come by and pick up their fuel all right so we need one two three four five. let's just get rid of these and we can add one more onto the end here and see how this all is shaping out together all right nice so hmm i wonder could i do something with the top bit there Anyway, I'll look over that a little later. Let's just clean this up at the back. This should work. This bit will actually stick out, interestingly. But I can try to find a way to hide that with another pillar, just like an opposite pillar, like this one on the opposite end, and that will kind of hide that away. 
So that's kind of what's going to be happening to all the other ones. So there's gaps behind all of these. Just because I had to offset this little gate to fit it where the truck station is. You know, I'm, I'm quite the fool sometimes because I really could have just moved the truck station to fit where the gate was. But I didn't really think about that. I kind of wanted just to line up the truck station neatly, but I didn't need to. Anyways, it doesn't really matter because these do fit together relatively nicely now, so it's not really a big problem. But it is funny thinking about that. It's, a, it's just, it's so funny how I just took a little break, come back to it, and then I'm like, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> anyway, there we go. So that's that basically done. It looks clean. If we get rid of the UI and we just look in there, it looks nice and clean. The roof is painted just to let me know where the room above us is. So now, the nice thing here that's worked out very well is that this truck station... <clears throat> excuse me, this truck station is going to be feeding up the goods into the sorting and depot room. And the train station up above it is going to feed down into it. So everything will be kind of merging in there and then being ferried out to all the various rooms. So it's quite nice. I think it's... I hope so. Anyway, it's going to work very well. Um, but yep, these are all pretty good to go. And of course, we need to kind of find a way to seamlessly link this area to this area. It had to be raised in order to keep it over the sand. And then, you know, some stairs or whatever, and then some walls to hide it away, that kind of thing. Should look pretty good. But what we can do now, just while we've got a little bit of time left, is start to hook up these belts and figure out where we're at above. So this came with floor holes. So the floor holes are in place. Everything's in place. They're Mark V belts just to get everything done quickly. So let's just run back upstairs. Train's just coming in again. It's a pretty quick turnaround journey, actually. Yeah. So, the floor holes will be underneath the pathway here. And they'll... Obviously, the graphically, they're kind of bugged right now, but don't worry, when I reload the game, that'll be fixed. But they're going to basically come out sort of like this. And uh, I can then just choose kind of where they go in. Try to keep everything pretty compact, because we're going to be using these floors as logistical pathways to carry our stuff around. So, I don't know if it's convoluted or not, but basically the truck station will send up, for instance, copper. And then what I'll have to do is ferry this out and around. And then ultimately we're looking to bring it just over there. So it is a, it is a bit of a challenge. Because, yeah, it's got to come in, somehow go under this belt, under that belt, and then effectively find its way, you know into that slot right there. And the Caterium has to do the same, but over there. At least it doesn't have to go under belts, that one. So it's really just the copper that'll probably be the trickiest to tuck the belt away, but we could use those ceiling uh, poles or whatever, like we talked about earlier, to maybe do something with it. So this is a Mark II foundation. So technically there's room, like if I cut away a little bit here, for instance, and then I built a Mark I. I don't wanna say Mark, but you know what I mean. You could bring the belt under and over. I guess that would work. It's a little messy. I'll have to play around with that. That's the kind of thing where it's just trial and error, kind of experimentation to figure out how that's going to work. Um, it's funny as well. <clears throat> God, my voice. Uh, is that we have an enclosure for the miners. So another thing I could do, maybe right now, is just hook up the quartz. The quartz is right up there. And we can maybe start to feed it down into... Actually, let's just double check that I have what I need for a miner. No, I'm lacking modular frames, which should be over here. There we go. I should have zip lined up probably, actually. It would have been a good idea. There we go. The worst way of getting up here ever. But anyway, we've got two quartz mines or deposits ready to be exploited. I don't know if I'm going to use my little thing on this. Should I? I mean, maybe. I feel like it would probably make more sense just to actually connect it to the factory itself. But let's do this instead. We'll keep it on the world grid. That'll be the smart thing to do. Uh, let me get a wall and we'll just bring this up. And this allows me to at least keep things on the grid and know maybe where we can line it up a bit better. So, let's just try that. Now, we'll get rid of the mom. Oh yeah, I've been meaning to pick up that. There's a hard drive just at the end of the railway. I keep forgetting to get it. <laughs> it's gonna give me a recipe that'll change everything, won't it? That's what always happens. So, actually, the jetpack might be good here, the hoverpack, because there is power here. Yeah, excellent. Okay, cool. So, 
we'll go back to where the blueprinted room is. So this room, basically, the idea is that you put a miner inside of it. It's just an enclosure. That's all it is. But in theory, we could snap it to the world grid somehow. Uh, I'm missing a resource. Oh, I'm missing a little bit of concrete. Oh, okay. Uh, right, let's just fly really quickly down and get that. Got loads of it, obviously. I'll take the zip line back up so it'll be a bit um, less painful. Yeah. We can look at all the work we've done. Beautiful. <laughs> Need to put a roof on that. I think those power poles are probably going to be a bit too low for the constructors. Um, Alright, let's just hop up again. Nice. Okay, so there we go. So we can see that it will work. It's so hard to see inside this thing now, but we have to time the or not time it, locate it right where that deposit will line up. So there is actually pretty good. That could work. Or do we want it facing to the right? I assume we do, actually. All right. Let me grab this, bring it to about there. Just need to be able to fly over here so we can see inside. It's quite a tricky thing to kind of orientate ourselves like this. Okay, so if we look at that, it'll snap onto it, but we need it to be aligned. <laughs> oh my God, this is going to be too painful. All right, grab you. Bring it out this way, gives us more to work with. So that's our deposit right there. Yeah, thinking about it, this will probably have to move a little further out, so we're almost there. <laughs> okay, so about there. That should be a good enough distance. And then we are matching its height. I think, oh my god, this is the worst. I think that's it. I'm terrified to commit to it, though. Hang on one last second. I'm leaving all this in, I don't care. You gotta see what I go through just to make these things work. Co control or not, it doesn't really change anything. I need to just line it up properly. And then the, the other flipping thing that's driving me crazy is I happen to use the one material that makes it impossible to tell where the line is. Or almost. Okay, there we go. So... We know that we're aligned, we're aligned, everything's lined up. So where's the thing? Yep, it seems pretty far back in the building, but not too far back, hopefully. Okay, I'm committing to it. Can we go a bit lower? That's too lower, that's actually better. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. All right, it might have worked. It's worked. It's in a good spot. Yes. I mean, it does save time, even with the little playing around, the finickery, <laughs> the finagling. We're in. And it's ready with its lights and everything. So this is a mirror of the enclosure that I built for bauxite. And you can actually see it from here, which is kind of incredible. That's the tower that leads up to it. So it's just behind that tower. It's being obfuscated by the tower. Um, but yeah, we'll probably have something like that tower again for this area. Now, that's only one. We need to do... The oh, my God. I'm falling. I'm falling. <laughs> There's no power on those things. I'm falling. Um, yeah, so obviously it's, it's obviously coming out the cliff and stuff. But we'll merge it into the building somewhat. And it could look a bit better then. So let's try... Do this again. So, again, we'll use these foundations to help me along with this. We'll go with the Fix-It Foundation, just because it's very nice and clear. We'll use times 4 um, height. Drag it out this way. Let's go up to this. Let's just see what this looks like. So we need to rotate it. Oh, what am I missing now? Cable. Oh, my God. It's always something. All right, so cable. Where are we? There's 200 in here. Not much, actually. And thinking about it, so blueprints, get rid of you. And this is a cosmetic building, right? So I'll just add one. Do I have what I need? Uh, apparently so. I don't know why it says I need a portable miner. Did I add that? Oh, I did. Whoops. Just need one. 
All right, if I look on the right side, we seem to have everything. Okay, let's go back up. All right, good. Uh, I can get rid of that pole, maybe. So there's our thing. So it's, again, a little tricky, but it should save time overall. Building that would take a while. So do we need to come further back than this? Yeah. So maybe just to here, then. Now, obviously, these things aren't on the world grid themselves, so it can make it kind of tricky, generally speaking. But this is relatively dynamic. Okay, it will clip through. Oh, will clip through if I go back there. About there seems good. Maybe shift it over. It's a bit too central. Maybe this way. You're gonna do me dirty, aren't you? This pole, and that's the pole that's giving me the power right now. Okay. In order to get this right, I need that pole, but I need it somewhere else. So let's just grab this and up to here. All right, we are flying again. Fifth time is the charm. It's just a lot to remove if we get it wrong. So I'm seeing that. That seems good. Now, this is, says invalid placement. One more missing resource. I don't know what that means. It's obviously working here. What does it mean, one more missing resource? I have everything. Oh, I'm missing... What? But over here, it says I have everything. Yeah, I don't know what that means. It's like it's telling me, you know, I can't display something that you're missing right now. So I want to get it aligned. That's aligned right there. I don't see what would be wrong with that. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. I got it. I'm so sorry if you spotted it, but it's this. This little mother effer. Let's get this out of the way. Alrighty, that should be it. So I was thinking, like, why can it work on one side and not the other? <laughs> Normally it would say something like, you know, a player is blocking. All right, there we go. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm sticking to it. <laughs> and that's nice and aligned with the other one. It would be really nice if this just works. Really, really, really nice. Oh, no. It's pretty far over. But we can turn sideways, actually, and that'd be okay. Yeah, that's okay. I'm okay with that. And then we'll just drag it out this way. Obviously, it doesn't align with this wall hole per perfectly, but it's pretty good. And it keeps it uh, looking relatively consistent. So can we even we can even go there. Wow. Uh, no, we can't. Let's do this. Good enough for me. A little snaky, but good enough for me. Cool. All right, there we go. I don't know why that door is like a red light on it, by the way, because you can switch it to always closed, and then it's supposed to be red. Switch it to always open, it goes back to green. But when I reload the save, that's always open now. So switch back to automatic. Hmm. Okay, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I've done this a few times and noticed that it's been red even when I like reload the save, but I guess... Doesn't want it. it wants to embarrass me in front of everybody, so that's fine. <laughs> Alright, let's get rid of this. There we go. And uh, we'll just drag this out. And this could be like where the tower is, the stairwell maybe. In fact, I was thinking that this would be a perfect area for a stairwell. That's why I actually left that. But maybe now it would be better to use that as a pathway. So this would be the hallway. And we could drag the hallway out that way and then hit a... 3x3 three three somewhere there and go, just go up. That would look pretty good. I think I've got a little bit of time left, do I? Oh, actually, a lot of time's already passed. But yeah, so something like that goes over there. Goes over there. So somewhere here, 3x3 three three that carries me up there. If we just want to get one last little view of that, a little bit of distance on it. Let's see if we can have a look at how it looks from afar. Man, aren't blueprints just the best? So there we go. That's what we're dealing with. Obviously, I don't know about that middle bit, but there's going to be some sort of stairwell. So that's going to be feeding its quartz down now. Straight down below. Both of them straight down below. And they need to, just for those who can't remember, 
in the previous episode, they are going to go right there, those two belts. So really, really handy. They don't need to go to the truck station or anything. They can just come straight down. It's going to look great. I think it's going to fit really nicely. All right, so that's going to be the proper end to the episode. Thank you very, very much for watching. I'm really looking forward to finishing this factory off in the next episode. We're going to be building the manufacturers, doing a little bit more of the cosmetics, and uh, turning it all on, obviously, which is the most fun part. So I'm pretty confident that everything's going to be working really well, and this factory should be able to run at 100% immediately, unlike the aluminum factory, which is still at about 85, I think. So yeah, pretty cool. All right, looking forward to seeing any feedback as well in this episode. If you have any suggestions and things you'd like to see cosmetic-wise before we actually start in the next one, please do let me know. All right, that's going to be it for me. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching the video. Consider liking it if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more, and if you want to support even further, consider becoming a channel member. Channel members get early access to my videos, ad-free, and also access to my Discord, where we've just set up a new Valheim and Satisfactory server for people to play on. Hopefully we can grow a community and add more games and perks in the future. Either way, I appreciate people just watching this far into the video. Thank you.